animal is. been around when her husband stabbed her to death in the year 1666. <laughs> well, Reese, that's a new record for you, Pug. What is all this, anyways? Allow me, gentlemen. Gentlemen. Traveling Museum of Horrors. See the world's greatest murderers and their victims. Bluebeard, Lucretia Borgia, Richard III, and many others. Professor Paracelsus, Smythe Curator. Smith. Oh, Smith. At your service, gentlemen. So, you're going to put the show on in Simpson's barn, huh? More than a mere show, my dear sir. An edifying and educational display. Bayes and his adoptory open tomorrow and experience the classic Aristotelian catharsis through pity and fear. Adults, 25 cents. Children, a dime. Tell your friends. Please, Quitch, a little more respect for Bloody Mary. Well, she sure looked real to me. Oh, I think maybe you need a pair of glasses like the professor has. I don't need glasses. Why, I can spot a baby flea on a hairy dog from a half mile off. Oh, I see. Well, then, uh, maybe you've just had a little more experience at spotting hairy fleas on dogs than you have at telling live women from dummies. Now, you know anybody could have made a mistake like that, and I know just as much about live women as you do. <laughs> uh, here's the place you're looking for. My supplies seem for the lift, Mr. Barrett. Not a bit. Glad for your company. Uh, may I help you? This town's looking better and better. <laughs> uh, did you want a room? First, I'd like to see Con McLeod. Who? Me brother, Con McLeod. Me name's Shamus. Uh, there's no one by that name here. This is the Hotel Laredo. Well, then he has to be here. He wrote me. There's no one named McLeod in this hotel. Now, he's a sailor like myself. Two or three years younger. Of course, he's not as good looking. Now, Con put you up to this. One of his jokes. You mean it? He isn't here? And he hasn't been here? But what about the letter? How do you explain a letter to me? I can't. But I do know who's in this hotel and who isn't. Come nearly 2,000 miles to see Con. Haven't seen him since he shipped out six years ago. We're sorry. Nothing he can do for his brother now, and it could hurt us. The people wouldn't still be so frightened. Why risk it? It never happened. I want it forgotten. Con McLeod was just never in this hotel.
about your brother. Ask Dr. Ingram. Dr. Ingram? Reese and I take some of your big winners over the bank, put them in the vault for safekeeping, huh? Did you ever see anybody as lucky at cards as old Joe here? No, I knew a <laughs> fellow in New Orleans once, won 83 straight hands. 83 in a row? Yep. Now, that's hard to believe, Jack. Yeah, a hard loser that shot him figured the same thing. <clears throat> two dollars. <whistles> There's your two dollars, and I'll raise you two. Four king. Ooh wow. You know, Chad, winning ain't the only reason a man is staying a poker game all night. Well, certainly not losing. Yeah. Oh, but Joe's got a foolproof system. Gillis, will you stop whistling? You got a tin there, you better leave. I'm staying in the game. That's a boy. Stay in there with him, Joe. Yeah, your luck's bound to change sooner or later. You said you're staying. With what? I'm going to give you an I.O.U. All right. I'm feeling generous. I'll take your I.O.U. Your word as a ranger should be all right. Anything we can do for you, Joe? Yeah. Keep your hands off me. Go away. Well, we'll right. bring you in luck, Joe. We'll bring you in luck. Thomas McLeod. I'm looking for my brother, Con. Why come to me? I was told you could help me to find him. You were misinformed. I don't think I was, Doctor. And I'm going to get an answer out of you one way or another. Your brother's dead. I don't believe you. Who killed him? No one. He died of natural causes. He was young and healthy. He was feeling fine when he wrote me to meet him here. Now, what could have come on him so sudden? He developed a high fever now. At first, I couldn't diagnose it. And then I learned he came in from a ship from Galveston. There were several cases of cholera. Cholera? I thought it was best to say nothing. Best for who? People, this hotel, the town. And what about my brother, doctor? Give any thought to what was best for him? Wasn't much I could do. Except let him die, bury him, and act as if he had never been here before. I was trying to avoid a needless case of panic. In case it was cholera. You mean you're not even sure it was cholera he had? McCloud, listen to me. It could have been something else. You could have helped him if you hadn't been so busy looking out for everyone else. It must have been cholera. You treated him like a rabid wolf to crawl off in the plains to die alone. No thought of him. You let him die quick, and the quicker the better. You stood back and you let him die. <laughs> fighting with you. Likewise. How do you feel? I'm all right. I'm sorry about your brother. But you'd forget, too, just like the rest of us.
Thanks for your help, boys. Oh, that's all right, Doc. Always a pleasure. Well, he can keep his thanks, but he might have stood us a drink. No, yeah, Doc. Not him, boy. That'd be a friendly thing to do. Besides, he knows it ain't good for you. Yeah. I don't even think he likes his own dog. <laughs> didn't want to wake us up. Well, he usually ain't that thoughtful. Probably was up all, all night playing poker. Won all his money back. No, he didn't win his money back. When'd you talk to him? I have it. Well, then how do you know? Well, simple deduction, Reese. Looking at the evidence and putting two and two together. Which of which and what of what? Well, first thing, how did Joe come in the room last night? Quiet. Right. Now, if he'd been a big winner in that poker game... He'd have come in noisy. And woke us all up for bragging. Right again. Now, something else. Take a look at his left hand. What do you notice? It needs washing. <laughs> Not that. His ring is missing. Yeah. So he probably lost that in the poker game, too. You see? Just by using your brain and watching a man, you can find out anything you want to know about him without even talking to him. Oh. Excuse me. I, I've finished with this. Oh, good, good. Well, why didn't you tell me he's going to get your knife sharp? I'd have had him done mine. Oh, well, you can get yours done later. What do I owe you, mister? Ah, uh, mister, what do I owe you? Oh, sorry. <laughs> I forgot. I always wear these when I'm on the grindstone. It keeps out that screeching. Well, I'll tell you what, part. If you got another pair of them things, I'll give you a dollar for them. <laughs> yeah, if you had a dollar left. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, ladies. Good morning. With your kind permission, I would like to put at least one of my posters here in your lobby. The Museum of Horrors. As if we didn't have enough unpleasantness in Laredo. Madam, our exhibit is a tribute to murder as an art, practiced with consummate skill and cunning over the centuries. Look, I've seen murder right out there in the street. Dumb brutes of men with no better way to settle an argument than shoot one another. Mother... Believe me, I share your feeling about such crude violence such as that. But uh, those whom our exhibit immortalizes approach the challenge with infinite subtlety and the most bizarre inventiveness. Well, it sounds pretty unhealthy to me. Oh, on the contrary. I think you'd find a visit to our museum most rewarding. One little poster... All right, ah. put it up, put it up. Stop. Oh. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Doors open at 10. Come, quick. Would you be staying on, Mr. McLeod? I'm not sure what I'll be doing. The plans were all set in one direction. Mr. McLeod, I, I don't want you to think we were heartless. We were frightened, but we did everything we could for your brother. I understand. We did exactly what the doctor advised. Hmm. Sometimes I wish we'd used less of his advice and more of our own. Now you slow down, Jock. Just slow down a bit. I want him arrested. What's this about? Well, the doc here, he, uh, he claims that you killed his dog. Your dog? I found him this morning choked to death. Now, why would I want to kill your dog? To get back at me, that's why. You're clearly not responsible for what you do. Because I jumped you yesterday, you would have killed me if the Rangers hadn't stopped you. Well, now, he might have roughed you up a bit, but I wouldn't say he was out to kill you. And Dave, put yourself in his place. 
Well, you seem to have found yourself some very dedicated defenders. I didn't kill your dog. You won't lock him up? Well, now, I can't just arrest him because you tell me to. Where is Riley? More concerned about the dog dead than he ever was that poor animal when it was alive. But who could do such a thing? Maybe it was an accident. Huh? Uh, I've seen that dog. And what happened to him weren't no accident. Uh-uh. Riley, I want my money. Well, you got my OU, Gillis. Yeah, but I want cash, and I want it today. I'm leaving Laredo in the morning. I mean to take that $55 with me. Well, I'll send it to you. Well, I may be moving around a little. By request. Riley, if I don't have that money by 9 tonight, I'm going to make a lot of trouble for you in this town. I'm going to go to your captain. I'm going to ask him why all the bills about the honor among the uh, rangers when he's got a four-flusher like you in the company. Uh-oh. <clears throat> Gillis, you go to my captain. I'm going to curve you seven ways from Sunday. Nine o'clock. Fifty-five dollars, okay? Joe, how come you didn't hit that man? Stay out of my business, Chad. Oh, what are you frothing about, Joe? You know that tin horn ain't going to go to the cabin. I know he ain't. Somebody should have told that tin horn that it ain't very smart to rile Joseph Riley. Can't tell that crockhead nothing. Yeah, that's a fact. Mrs. Halsey is still kind of shaken up after finding that body in the hallway, sir. Oh, maybe Miss Halsey can tell us all we need to know. I'll get her for you, sir. How was he killed? Strangled. I think he came out of his room, started for those stairs, and somebody met him in the hall. That's the way I figured it, too, Captain. Did you, Ben? Yeah. And I figured out why he was killed, too. I'm listening. Well, Gillis was a heavy winner at cards, you know. So I hear. Well, must have been carrying three or four hundred on him. Everybody in town knew it. So, somebody jumped him and robbed him. Uh, is that the way you figure it? Yes, sir. Just by putting two and two together, Captain. It seems when you put two and two together, you get five. Gillis was found with four hundred dollars in his wallet, untouched. Four hundred? Mm-hmm. Well, uh, then I guess he wasn't robbed then, huh? Oh, I can say that's quite a reasonable assumption. Where did I go wrong? Captain? I'll make this brief. I'm all right now. Gillis was a guest in the hotel? And he'd been here a week. He told me he'd be checking out tomorrow morning. When was the last time you saw him? About 5.30. That's when he told me he'd be leaving tomorrow morning. And then he went to his room? Well, he went upstairs, I suppose, to his room. Now, are those the only stairs that lead to the second floor? No, there's one in back. But we keep it locked because it leads right down to the kitchen. And nobody could have used them. I have the key. Were you in the lobby from the time Gillis went up to his room till the time your mother found the body? No. Mother and I had some supper. I must have been away from the desk nearly half an hour. And during that half hour, anybody could come up and go down without being seen? Yes. Who were the people who went up and went down while you were here on duty? Uh, let me see. There was Professor Smythe and the man that works for him, and Mr. McLeod, and David, Dr. Ingram. I came to see a patient, old Mrs. Tompkins. Well, let me see, there was somebody else. Oh, yes, Mr. Riley. Yeah, that's right. I, uh, I went up to see Gillis to uh, settle a debt. You asked me which room he was in. Yeah. Did he, uh, did he owe you money, Joe? Well, no, sir. You see, uh, 
He had one of my IOUs. Oh, now, sir, it's very easy to clear Joe. Clear me of what, Chad? Now, don't you start telling me how to put two and two together. No, sir, but it, it's so simple. Why would Joe want to kill Gillis? Chad, will you stop? Joe, I'm just trying to help you out, pardon? Now, his only possible motivation would be to get his IOU back, right? Right. Now, since the IOU was found in Gillis's wallet, it's obvious that Joe didn't kill him. That would be obvious. Only the IOU was not found in Gillis's wallet nor in his room. It wasn't. Somebody took it. Well, certainly not Joe. Sure, it was me. Huh? All right, I went up to see Gillis. See, I got a hold of that fancy deck of marked cards of his. The one he'd been using to bleed me all week. How did you manage it, Joe? Well, I'm pretty good with luggage locks, Captain. Well, that was when I uh, asked you which was his room, ma'am. I went on up and got the cards and left. The second time I came back, uh, you weren't on duty, ma'am. And you borrowed the cards to face Gillis with them? Well, see, I made him a business proposition, Captain. Uh, his crooked cards for my IOU, the money I'd lost, and uh, my ring. He accepted? Well, he sure didn't want those gunsels over at the saloon to know that he'd been using crooked cars. Joe, when you came down the stairs, did you see anybody in the hallway or in the lobby when you left? Well, Dr. Ingram was, uh, was up in the hallway, Captain. I was just going into Miss Tompkins' room. Now, Captain, let's look at this from another angle. Cooper. Captain, even if Joe did want to kill Gillis, he'd have done it outside in an alley someplace. He certainly wouldn't have walked into the lobby of the hotel and asked Barbara what room he was in. And I thought of something else, too. Cooper, will you stop thinking? I'm going to put a guard here tonight. Thank you, Captain. I'll continue this in the morning. You three stay here until you're relieved. Captain? A little bit awkward. One of your own men, a suspect, huh? At this point, Doctor, everybody went up those stairs as a suspect. If there's anything I can do. Thank you, Mr. McLeod. But it seems Mother and I will be very well protected. See you in the morning. You're too trusting, Barbara. <laughs> That's just your way of looking at it. A man's charm is no index to his character. A man can smile and still be a villain. I know. But I don't think there's anything villainous in the smile itself. Well, try not to worry. Well, who's worried? We're with you, Joe. You bet. We're with you all the way to the end. You mean you get me hanged? Frighten your mom. Oh. Everybody's a bit edgy. You done your homework? Hmm. I hope I never have to add another column of figures again. Arithmetic. Now, that was my favorite subject. Especially fractions. I don't know why. Just some pleasure in taking all those little bits and pieces and putting them together and coming up with the right answer. <laughs> I liked English. Especially literature, you know, poetry. Sure. All girls do. Arithmetic's more practical, I'm afraid. Well, someday you'll have someone around to take care of the practical things. I'll leave you to read your poetry. I'm afraid I don't let myself think about those things anymore, Mr. McLeod. Now, what did you call me, Shamus? Shamus. <laughs> I was engaged, and my husband-to-be was killed in a gunfight in the street. Oh, I see. I'm sorry. He provoked it. Men seem to have that streak of violence in them. All men. I suppose there are a few exceptions. Well, now, if you come across any fractions you can't tame, I'm your man. I'll remember that. Good night.
lover. You know, who'd have thought at first that there was so much warmth and gentleness in that Shamus McLeod? Mother, you were eavesdropping. Your voice is carried. You know, Dave isn't going to like this. He's a jealous man. You always think the worst of Dave. Well, the feeling is mutual. He thinks he'd have a wife to share his unhappiness if I'd kept my mouth shut. Well, a woman could do worse than marry Dave Ingram. I'm not so sure. Sometimes I think he took up medicine not to ease people's pain, but to enjoy it. Oh, Mother. All right, I've said enough. Forget it. I'll go think of something pleasant like, um, Shamus McLeod and his fraction. <laughs> <laughs> And the outside kitchen door was open. The killer must have heard you and then ran off. I don't remember what I exactly did then. You screamed. Were you in your room, Mr. McLeod? No, I was here in the lobby. I'd just come in. The shame is uh, Mr. McLeod took over then. Captain, I think Miss Halsey should try to rest. Of course. If there's anything I can do, Barbara. No, I'll be all right. Thank you. Where were you this evening, Professor? In my room. The irony of it. My entire life has been dedicated to the study of murder in all its refinements. And here, when I have an opportunity for first-hand experience, I am asleep. And him? Also asleep. Can he speak for himself? Oh, Mr. Quitch is the perfect companion. He listens attentively and says nothing. Cam, this just don't make no sense to me at all. First Ingram's dog, then the gambler, now Mrs. Halsey. Doesn't make sense because we're not dealing with a sensible mind. This killer is no longer responsible. I disagree with you, Doctor. An examination of the most celebrated practitioners of the ultimate crime will show... No history lessons tonight, Professor. I'm concerned with here and now. Three deaths, and no reason to think this is the end. And that's why I feel you owe it to this town to take McLeod into custody. Why are you so set on getting me locked up? One's protection. You think a lot about other people now, don't you, Doctor? And never a thought for yourself? Ordinarily, I wouldn't feel qualified to tell a lawman how to do his job. But these are unusual circumstances. Now, if a man is a threat to himself and to others, he should be put away. Whether his body is diseased or his mind. Now, I appreciate your concern, Doctor. But I am placing nobody in custody. Oh, but, uh, Mr. McLeod, you are not to leave Laredo. It suits me. I presume we are to be confined to Laredo also, Captain? Your presumption was quite correct, Professor. Business has been most disappointing. But as you so eloquently put it, Captain, who is interested in the great crimes of the past when they are part of one in the here and now? Quitch. Hey, Jack. What's the hurry? Well, it's plain enough to see now, isn't it? What is? Who's going to be next? You heard what I heard, didn't you? Sure, I heard. I'm not going to let this man out of my sight. When the killer strikes again, I'm going to be there.
start. Chad, what do you think you're doing? That's what I'm asking you. The doctor there's going to be the next one killed. I know that, but the killer's not going to move in with half the ranger company following him. Well, I'm staying out of sight. Stand out like a fat calf in a famine. Now go on back to barracks and just, just don't give me any more argument. I hope you haven't made me lose them. Smith, Doctor? Exactly the same as the others. Please stop that! Sorry. Captain, how many people are going to die before you arrest McLeod? No, I'm not going to arrest McLeod or anybody else just because you're prejudiced against them. But it's so obvious the man's been deranged because of the shock of his brother's death. Now, he has a grievance, or at least thinks he does, against this whole town. When we've talked, he seemed to be completely in control of himself. I mean, it's nothing. Believe me, I know what I'm talking about. During the war, I... I tried to save the life of a badly wounded soldier. He died on the operating table. And then his best friend started to brood. And finally, he... He blamed... Not the gunner who fired the shell, but me and my entire staff. He tried to kill all of us. I still have the scar, see? And yet, that man outwardly was just as calm and self-possessed as McLeod. Now, those circumstances sure don't apply here, Doctor. Captain, you say I'm determined to blame McLeod. Now, you appear just as determined to exonerate him. There is no evidence against him. When was the first death? The night McLeod arrived in Laredo. And there's been one every night since. Now, that's not coincidence, Captain. Now, if you leave that man at large, I feel this town should hold you responsible for any more killings. <laughs> just said there. Captain, I've been thinking. Stop it. And that's an order. You know what I think is confusing the whole issue? You know what's confusing me? Having the three of you in town together. So I'm going to take two and one and make three and ship the three of you out together till I settle this. Well, now, Captain, You'll report and relieve you at the summit station. We can't do that, sir. Why not? Because Hannigan's past the snowed in, that's why. That's right, sir. We wouldn't even be able to find those men for three weeks. Then relieve Drexel and Claiborne in Hyde City. Can't do that either. Them men you sent after them, they know them on sight, and we don't, Captain. Well, there's got to be some place I can send you. You haven't far Lee, sir. There's a lot of people in this town, sir, that think maybe I killed Gillis. If you send me out of town, it's uh, going to look like you're trying to protect me, sir. All right, clear out. <laughs> I quit worrying, Joe. Look here, Reese. I'll quit worrying when you quit telling me I can't. <laughs> I know who's been killing these people. Oh, you do? Well, then, who is? Well, I ain't saying till I can prove it. Seamus McCloud ain't the only one came into Laredo the day of that first killing. <laughs>
ever going to explain this to the captain. Good work, Reese. You scared that killer off just in time. Just. You uh, didn't happen to get a look at the strangler, did you? Well, um, well, no, Captain. You see, you see what happened was this. I got looking at this thing over here, and I want to tell you I never seen anything like this my whole blame life. No sir. Then I heard the music stop, and then the blade started w wiggling, and I couldn't move, Captain. Couldn't move at all. I was so scared, just like I am now. Get away from that thing, Reese. Come on. It's perfectly safe. The blade cannot drop it. <laughs> ah, now you tell me, huh? <laughs> Seems I was mistaken. Sorry. You're sorry. I gotta have my head chopped off in there. Well, the head shorter, you wouldn't have been the same, Reese. Reese, uh, what were you doing here? Well, I, I figured all along, Captain, that the professor here and that fellow over there were the real killers. All along, Captain. On account of they come into town the, the first day they started. I assure you, my interest in murder is purely academic. You all right, Quitch? Had a little trouble rounding him up, Captain. There's, uh, there's been another attempted murder, Mr. McLeod. Well, I've been told. Where were you this afternoon? Just wandering around. By yourself? Yes, Captain. You have to take my word I didn't come in here and try to strangle that man. Though why I'd pick him, I don't know. He's not even a part of the town I'm supposed to hate. But I'm sure the good doctor can find an answer for it. I've said my say. I want you to arrest me, Captain. There's a lot of people in this town blaming me for what's happened. That's why I want you to lock me up. But what changed your mind? If there's another killing why I'm under lock and key. That'll clear me. I don't know. That's what I want. I'm sure it'll make the people of this town rest easier. All right, Joe. Take him over to the jail and lock him up. He's not a doctor. McLeod's in custody. That's what you wanted from the beginning, wasn't it? few minutes. The whole town shut up tight as a drum. Reese. Yeah? If nothing happens tonight, that doesn't prove that Shamus was responsible, would no, it? No, no, of course not, of course not. Well, I know he isn't. Now, you just quit worrying. I'm working on a different tack, and I'm gonna have all this solved. I'm gonna have this whole thing all taken care of in no time at all. Oh, hi there. Evening. Now you quit worrying. Don't you worry none at all. Stay off the streets. Things are happening tonight. Well? Miss Halsey, your mother asked me to have these things sharpened. I haven't brought them to you before because, well, because of your trouble. I understand. But I'm counting on leaving Laredo early in the morning. So you'd like your money? Comes to dollar thirty cents.
here you are, Mr. Venner. <sighs> Mr. Venner, are you all right? Mr. Venner? Mr. Venner, this isn't ours. Uh, that's my list. Now to figure out what to do with my winnings. Eleven cents. <laughs> you know what I'd like to figure out is why that killer picks the people he does. Well, there isn't any reason. That's your point, isn't it? Uh, they figure he has his own reason. Even if it doesn't make sense to us, it does to him. Well, there just doesn't seem to be any sort of connection at all. Well, let's look at it for a minute. There's a dog, a gambler, a middle-aged woman, Blacksmith. Now, does he pick his victim ahead of time or just on the spur? I don't know, but it can't be just because of their looks. Yeah, maybe it's something they're doing. Well, they were all doing something different. That's right. Yeah, I see. The blacksmith was filing metal, the fellow in the museum was playing a flute, and Mrs. Halsey was brewing tea. And that noise goes right through me. Uh, you ought to get yourself some earplugs like that scissor grinder fella. Wait a minute. The noise? The noise, that's it. That's the connection. The file, the flute, and the kettle. They all make noise. And the dog must have been barking or howling. That Gillis fellow was always whistling. That's right. Hey, the scissor grinder came into town the same day as myself. Our killer is a man who can't stand high-pitched sounds like a scissor grinder. <laughs> like you wanted us to, sir. Who knows when that scissors grinder had ever been caught? It's just lucky we couldn't go, Arthur. As usual, you succeeded in spite of yourselves. Oh, no, sir, not this time. This gives us a whole new way of looking at things, sir. You see, this is a whole new approach to the ranger's job. Really? How'd you say it, Chad? Well, I said it was more head work and less leg work. That's, that's what you've decided. Mm -hmm. ah. You know, uh, I made a few decisions myself. Good. You yeah. have, Captain? I'm thinking of a new approach. Oh, that's well, wonderful, sir. That means we're all thinking along the same line. Well, not entirely. Uh, my new approach is this. Less horseplay, more hard work. Assignments taken without discussion, carried out as ordered. And if I find any resistance, I'll turn you over to my new adjutant. <laughs> 